The Amazon Echo Buds came out one month ago, and in the first month, there was a lot of talk about the Bose Active Noise Reduction, the 20-hour battery life, the onboard Alexa, and of course, the low price point. And while these are all very exciting features, it's now been one month and it's time to look past these and figure out how these earbuds actually perform under daily use. Now, I've been using these earbuds exclusively for the past month, and in this video, I want to share with you the worst features and the best features that I found that were not listed originally on the specs or in the original reviews. Now, these are things that you want to consider knowing if you plan on using these earbuds for any extended amount of time, because when you first open the box, you may not notice these pros and cons, but eventually these will be the features that make you either love or hate these earbuds. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien, and like I said, this video is all about the all new Echo Buds. I've been wearing them for one month every single day, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you all of the pros and the cons that I found after one month of actual use. Now in this video, I'm not gonna dive in and show you guys every feature and spec of the product. I think really what I wanna focus on is the pros and cons that I found. So if it's, you're trying to buy this right now, maybe it's like Prime Day, Black Friday, or just any other day and you're looking to buy these, these are things that I think you wanna know before you get them that you're not gonna see on spec sheets and you're not gonna see these on most other reviews. So stick around, there definitely is a lot that you definitely have to know about this product before buying it. So let's start off with some of the positives with these earbuds here. So first of all, the active noise reduction made by Bose packed into $130 earbuds, which also have Alexa. So extremely good value there. It's really, really high quality for the price. You're getting Alexa baked in, so you already have a smart assistant. Of course, it uses your phone, but still having that baked into these uh, just makes it a little easier. Instead of having to tap and hold, you just say you know the little keyword there, and then it does whatever you want. Now, the active noise reduction, I can't emphasize that enough. It really is very high quality. So if I turn that on and I'm listening to music, I won't be hearing anything else around me if I'm on a train, a plane, or if I'm just you know at work, there's announcements going on. It really deadens all the sound around you very well. Now, one small drawback, if you want to use it without listening to music, you will notice some level of white noise. I think that's pretty standard and expected, um, but regardless, I would say that's definitely a huge plus right there. Now, another big plus, I know I said this case was annoying. I said it was a large case, kind of annoying and clunky. They had a kind of a stupid way to charge it. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of the case, but one thing I really like about it is the very long battery life you get between the case and the earbuds. So I feel like I almost never charged this. I probably charged it like once in the past, maybe like a month or so. So you are supposed to get 20 hours of listening between the case and the earbud batteries. And honestly, I think I probably get about that much. So having to charge this so infrequently is a big plus, And I would say that almost makes up for the very large case size. Another plus here, I do like the texture of this. So I know again before I said I didn't really like the case, but it has a decent texture where it's not really too slippery. It's not going to fall out of your pockets. And I don't really feel like I'm going to lose this nearly as much, which again, maybe having it slightly larger, you know, it's not all bad. So the fact that you're less likely to lose this than something that's like really tiny, maybe not a bad thing there. One last plus I wanna talk about, and it was something I complained about before, but I'm starting to realize why they decided this, and that is not having the single tap to play or pause. I thought that was a big drawback before, I thought it was a clear miss, I didn't know why they did that, but after adjusting my earbuds a few times, and then maybe if I tried on like my Galaxy Buds, for example, I kinda noticed it, it kinda clicked in my head, and I said, you know what, I realized that if you have to adjust these earbuds and you accidentally touch the outside, you don't always want that playing or pausing your music. Sometimes you just wanna adjust them and make sure they fit properly. And so not having the single tap feature allows you to do that. So kind of a small plus right there. I don't know if they thought that through and that's what they meant to do, or if it just by coincidence is a byproduct of them cutting a corner. Who knows, who cares? Hey guys, a quick aside, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed, but you're interested in the latest tech just like this video, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button and the bell icon. I have some really exciting earbuds coming out in the next couple weeks, including the newest Microsoft Surface earbuds. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe. 
let's get back to the video. The first drawback I wanna talk about is the proximity sensors. So just a quick background. What these are supposed to do is when you put these earbuds in your ear, it starts playing music, you take it out, it automatically pauses. Great feature to have, really convenient. If somebody comes to talk to you, you're listening to a podcast, you take your earbuds out to listen to what they're saying to you, and then it doesn't, you know, you don't have to rewind and find out where you were on the podcast, right? That's just one example of where you'd use this. The issue I had, however, is that the proximity sensors are not that accurate. So sometimes I'll be listening and if you like yawn or just move a certain way, then it'll pause your music. Or if you take one out of your ear and you're holding it and you set it on the table, it might register the table as your ear and switch between playing and pausing for the other earbud. So the proximity sensors on this are far from perfect. That's just one problem I found with that. You're able to get, you know, it's not a huge deal if you just always have them in your ear and you're just do, you know, sitting normally, but if you're working out or if you're moving around at all, it can be a little bit strange. Another issue I had, and this is pretty standard with a lot of earbuds, but especially these, was a latency with videos. So if I'm watching a YouTube video, I have these in, I'll notice that there's some significant latency there between, you know, when somebody's talking, if the audio is offset, it becomes really weird and uncanny and almost hard to watch. I don't know if this is a pro or a con, but I found that I could wear these for approximately three hours before my ears got fatigued and I really didn't like wearing them anymore. So three hours is long enough that, you know, you can get through a day of work, you know, maybe three hours and you go to a meeting and maybe three more hours or whatever, and then another meeting, it does, you know, so three hours is not terrible, but I wish I could wear them a little bit longer than three hours without having that issue. Something common that we see with Alexa on the earbuds as well as on the Echo Auto is whenever you leave a Wi-Fi zone, it kind of gets weird and it cuts out and there's some amount of time when it doesn't work and it just acts really weird. You can't control your music, you can't do anything, and it just doesn't like switching between mobile data and Wi-Fi or the other way around. So that's kind of an Alexa problem. I think it's the Alexa app that's really causing that, but it's something that transfers over to these earbuds, unfortunately. Not to repeat myself again, but I don't wanna sound nitpicky here. This video is really meant to be just the issues that I found, not big problems that would really say, this is not a good product for you, but maybe for some people, you would wanna know these before you buy the product so that you have a better experience when you get them, you know what to expect. So another issue I found, Alexa's great on here. So I really do like having the microphone there, but if it's windy outside, I found that it really struggles to hear what I'm saying. So if I'm walking around trying to skip a song or pause the music or turn the volume up, and if it's breezy out, it can't hear me at all. It does not register that. And ultimately it's kind of annoying. I have to take my phone out and do it that way. Uh, when you have Alexa there. I mean, I understand it's windy, they're microphones, that's what happens, but I know other microphones out there can do a better job than these. And then of course, there's the issue that I talked about in the previous video with Spotify. It's kind of just a small bug. I imagine they will fix this. And it's that if I open Spotify on my phone and then I put these in my ear and I ask Alexa to skip a song, it can't do it. It says I can't skip that song. And, and then I don't know why it can't skip the song, but it, it just can't. And then what you have to do is you have to tell Alexa to open Spotify and it opens Spotify, even though it's already open on your phone, and then you can control it. So I don't know why that's a small bug in, in the system right there. It's kind of annoying, um, but regardless, it's something that you have to deal with. So a final small drawback. This one's very, very small, but I do wish they polka yoked the design of the cradle a little bit better than they did in this one. So if I take the earbuds, maybe one out of five times, if you just drop it in, it ends up being in a totally wrong orientation. It looks right, but it's not right. And the thing doesn't close all the way, which means that these don't charge, which means that your earbuds will not be fully powered next time you try to use them. So you do have to make sure that you put it in correctly down like that. I don't know why they didn't do that. Again, I think it comes down to really in conclusion for this product, guys. I think these earbuds are great. They work really well. Having Bose active noise reduction is amazing in this budget. Having Alexa on board is really nice. I do think there are some shortcomings here and there. So I think you can really separate a lot of products into two different categories. One is a product that really pushes the boundaries and had a lot of engineering effort in there. You can tell people worked really hard to solve every single problem and really push the envelope of what can be packed into to whatever product they're making. And then on the flip side, the other category of products is products that are essentially just kind of riding the coattail of the engineers on the front and they're saying like, yeah, we'll do that too. That's a, that's a good bandwagon, we can make a lot of money. And I think that's kind of what Amazon did here. So yes, it's a great product. I don't think it really pushed any boundaries. I don't think it showed us anything new. It's a larger form factor. I don't think they really put that much engineering effort into this. Now, I apologize to the engineers that did work on this. I, I understand that it is 
a good design, they did a good job here, but I think that it, does, it pales in comparison to what we see from the Galaxy Buds or the AirPods or a lot of other products out there that are really just pushing the envelope a little bit more. So overall guys, that's what I have to say about this product. Great product, not the best product, but definitely a really good value for the price. So I hope you enjoy this video guys. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.